proudly report that we have made real progress in all three fronts this academic year. In these last two semesters, we have pushed and passed the legislation in the Senate General Assembly, an undergraduate research certificate program that harnesses existing research-oriented course offerings to create a compatible certificate program for students who are interested in conducting independent research. We have also begun profiling outstanding undergraduate researchers across disciplines in a monthly undergraduate research spotlight under the no events. Lastly, for the first time in the committee's history, we have brought together student representatives from different research organizations and programs all over campus to the table to a routine monthly roundtable meeting with the Office of Undergraduate Research. With this new group called the Research Student Advisory Council, we have engaged in a range of constructive conversations on resource sharing, mutual support for event publicity, and dialogues on the role of undergraduate research at a tier one research university. In fact, we as a group have met and decided to co-host a kickoff event on the first day of research week coming up later in April that will highlight the values and benefits of research-oriented student organizations for those interested in conducting research as an undergrad. This reception intends to recognize outstanding undergraduate researchers within our academic community and to promote camaraderie across curious, like-minded individuals. Often, we feel that our roles at the university of this size to be minuscule. We doubt that we can truly make an impact in the world. But when I look out to the crowd tonight, it truly delights me in the work that I do with the Senate and College Councils. My work is reflected in your accomplishments. For that, I thank you. For that, I thank you for being part of this very special and niche academic community here on campus. Your contribution to the undergraduate research culture has both inspired and challenged me personally to become a better student, scholar, and a lifetime learner. I hope you enjoy the rest of tonight's program, and now I would like to welcome Carissa Nietzsche, the president of the Senate College Councils. Good evening. On behalf of the Senate of College Councils, welcome to the third annual research reception. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us in celebrating outstanding undergraduate researchers here on campus. I would also like to extend many thanks to Senate's Undergraduate Research Committee and the various offices across campus that have made this reception today possible. Over the course of the past year, the role of research in a state public institution has been under fire. There is no doubt that research is crucial to the academic mission of the university to transform lives for the benefit of society. I want to commend each of you here today on being partners in this academic mission. As the future thinkers, innovators, and discoverers of the next decade, your contributions to society will be significant in shaping the future of Texas, our nation, and our world. Thank you again for being here. It is now my pleasure to introduce one of Undergraduate Research Committee co-chairs, Ryan Hirsch. Welcome everyone to the third annual research reception. We thank you very much for being here tonight. Before we hear from our keynote speaker, we would like to show a brief video presentation portraying, portraying the benefits of undergraduate research and ways in which students can get involved at UT. Thank you and please enjoy the following video segment.
looking at the way high school government and civics classes might affect someone's views on civic participation. Our research sort of has a multifaceted approach with diagnostics, disease prevention, the drug delivery, therapeutics. I'm doing research with the Fast Track Student Satellite Fund, and what I work on is GPS post processing. My work is with ethnic violence and genocide. My field work and I was just more focused on how society is part of the conflict, so that's what I did in Boston this past summer. Research is a great thing, but in a lot of ways, research is just a really active playground in which other exciting things happen. I don't think we'll that what we do here and what research does is it changes the way that students completely think about their education. You can identify one thing that you find really fascinating and learn a lot about it, and you might be the first person to learn a lot about it. And I think that that's really important to allow you to pursue your passions and to, to also to see if you might want to do this for the rest of your life. If you really love doing research, then that can lead to a really, you know, fantastic career path. You learn how to use those applicational skills really early. You learn how to design your experiments, you learn how to question things. You learn why do research, which is a huge part of lab research. The biggest part of research is taking a situation that doesn't work and figuring out how to make it work. No class can teach you that. Only research can teach you that. My job as a research educator is to encourage students through that process. I have a research educator that's really supportive of what we do. He doesn't shoot down ideas or, um, you know, be little ideas in any way. In my thesis advisor, just kind of having letters as a colleague is really nice. So I mean, let alone all of the academic advice he's given me, in, you know, throughout the years. But just kind of that personal relationship that I've developed with him is really, really powerful. The students should remember here at the University of Texas is that they are at a tier one research institution. I think the university has a duty to do research, and students have a duty to do research because we're here to better the world, not just ourselves. And doing research helps you learn more about the world, helps others learn more about the world. One thing that uh, this research has led to is that it's helped me to get an internship at NASA this past summer. It's had a huge benefit for me, both for my education now and for my future career, being involved with with research and uh, doing something outside the classroom. The research we do here is authentic real research. We're working on questions that have unknown answers. Just the fact that we do these satellite projects that are totally run by students, totally built by students, um, has really given me an opportunity I don't think I've ever had anywhere else. And that's one of the reasons about WT. It's so big and it's so invested in so many areas of research that you can really do anything you want from building a satellite to researching the ancient literature that kind of stuff. There are definitely faculty out there who want you to come find them. You'll learn something valuable from it. And so as an undergrad, you have to take that initiative, but it's totally worth taking. Every undergraduate at the University of Texas has the opportunity to engage in research. There are many resources and programs here on campus that support undergraduate research. As a researcher, you can assist in your faculty's sponsored project or carry out independent inquiry. One of the various resources offered to undergraduates is the Eureka database, where you can search for opportunities by keyword and find faculty from a wide range of fields. You can also navigate through college departments and organize research units. Students from any college or school can participate in the Bridging Disciplines programs. Within the College of Natural Sciences, students have access to the Freshman Research Initiative, summer programs, and more. The College of Liberal Arts allows students to earn course credit for research and offers multiple scholarship opportunities. Liberal Arts students may also apply to the Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program. Various undergraduate opportunities exist in the Cockrell School of Engineering, including paid and volunteer research positions and credit for independence day. You can join a student-run organization like the Science Undergraduate Research Group or the Liberal Arts Undergraduate Research Chapter. This is the undergraduate research website and attend an info session to find out more about opportunities, contacting faculty, and other strategies on how you can get involved. I'm proud to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Sean Ferriero, a recipient of numerous teaching awards and a wonderful supporter of undergraduate research here on campus. Dr. Ferriero has inspired many of his students, both inside and outside of the classroom, and he is also one of my professors. I feel fortunate to have him this semester. Please help me in getting a round of applause for Dr. Sean Ferriero.
Since um, it's my pleasure to be here tonight, I, I, I love undergraduate research and so I was thrilled when they invited me and, and it's great to see so many people who've been in my class and administrators who've been supportive to my undergraduate research efforts here at UT. Um, when they asked me to, to, to talk about undergraduate research, I thought long and hard about why they would ever invite me to, to talk about undergraduate research. And I thought about the classes I was teaching this semester, and so I thought, all right, so what are some similarities between the University of Texas, uh, the Congress, and the Catholic Church? So I'm teaching a class on, on the US Congress, and then the Catholic Church is a political institution. And I thought, well, I guess at, at a first step, um, they've all been publicly reviewed recently, right? So we have Rick Santorum, who thinks that we're snobs because we care about undergraduate and going to college. And then we have a certain supporter of ours who wants to radically transform what it is that we do here at the University of Texas. Um, but not only at UT, right? Uh, this is congressional approval, right? 82% of Americans right now disapprove of Congress, and 12% approve. And these numbers are actually, uh, the Catholic Church is envious of, of such high numbers, um, where uh, the Catholic Church is even a little bit less popular. But I thought that there were a couple of other similarities. Another similarity, is that all three institutions have people that wear funny costumes. So in the Senate, there's a tradition of Seersucker Thursday. So every year on a particular Thursday, all the senators will wear their Seersucker suits. Um, here at UT, uh, we have Evo, our mascot. And um, right in the Catholic Church, we have uh, the Cardinals. <laughs> Come on, laugh larger than that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but at heart, all three of these institutions have really good intentions. Right? At UT, of course, we care about education, uh, primarily. Um, the US Congress cares about protecting the country and, and, and keeping us safe. And of course, um, the Catholic Church is, is geared all towards uh, salvation. Um, there's one big difference, though, between uh, what it is that, that, that UT has and, and these other institutions, and that is that um, I have a lot more faith and confidence in the leadership here at the University of Texas. And I'm not just saying that because Matt Brown was willing to meet with my nephew um, and even allowed him to wear the national championship ring. Um, <laughs> I have much less faith in, in this set of folks in helping us figure out how to get Congress popular again. Or this man, for as snappy of a dresser as he was recently in Mexico with his sombrero uh, and helping the Catholic Church along. Um, but there's one other uh, similarity between these three institutions. Um, and that's that there's an obvious answer that is going to help all three of them out an awful lot. Um, so the obvious answer, of course, with the Catholic Church is, is embodied in this, in this painting. Um, right? I don't want to get all religious on you, but clearly, uh, if you are Catholic and you do believe and you think that God might actually help the Catholic Church out, uh, there's this document which should certainly help out the U.S. Congress once again becoming popular. And here at UT, I think the road to popularity, of course, is an undergraduate research. Here I am with one of my undergraduates at the National Archives, um, doing, engaging in some of that uh, undergraduate research. And so I'm gonna date myself a little bit now because long before there was Jon Stewart and long before there was the Colbert Report, there was the show that still is actually on at about the same time and it's on um, David Letterman, right? Have you ever heard of David Letterman? So David Letterman was famous and I, I guess was famous, is famous uh, for his top 10 list. And so, in thinking about my speech tonight, I thought, I need to come up with top 10 reasons why you should engage in undergraduate research. So this is just my list from the biased perspective that I have sitting in the College of Liberal Arts. So the number 10 reason, right, he always stops with 10 and, and goes down to one. So the number 10 reason for why you should get involved in undergraduate research is because you get invited to fancy parties. Um, here's one particular fancy party that, that some people in the, in the audience will recognize. And then here's another fancy party uh, that I was invited to that had, had to do with um, people who are engaged in research here at, at the University of Texas. Um, the number nine reason uh, is resources, resources, resources. There are 50,000 students on campus here, and it's hard for uh, the university to support 50,000 people. But when you demonstrate a commitment to engaging in research, people at UT will always find the money for you so that you can carry out your research. Um, so I thought that a, a visual that I could, go, I, could, I could present to you with respect to resources was a stack of money. Um, if you're involved in undergraduate research, there's always money at UT that, that, where people will help you uh, conduct that research. The number of eight reason why you should be involved in undergraduate research is because every now and then you'll get a little bit of publicity. 
So a couple of years ago, I published this book, The Party Polarization in Congress. And just an example of the great publicity that you can get uh, by engaging in undergraduate research and the acknowledgments of my book, I list all of the undergraduates who helped me out in gathering data um, for this book. And I wish the screens were closer, but literally the list starts at about the 10th um, line on the left hand side, and it goes all the way down to three quarters of the next page. Um, so there are no doubt plenty of opportunities to engage in undergraduate research. If being in the acknowledgments of some pointy-headed academic book doesn't necessarily thrill you, perhaps this will. Um, this was a uh, cover on the New York Times right after they passed the health care bill, something that you've been hearing about in the news a little bit lately. And if you go all the way up, right, so Nancy Pelosi's carrying the big gavel, go all the way up and you see a woman in the last row who has gray hair. Does everyone see her? Right, all the way back, and then go to the person on the right. And that is actually one of my undergraduate researchers, who is, uh, works actually for Steny Hoyer, who's the guy off to the left, um, looking off, off the direction. So every now and then, engaging in undergraduate research will get your picture on the front page of the New York Times. Even better than being in the acknowledgments. Once again, seventh best reason to engage in undergraduate research, you get to meet interesting people. Um, so some of my researchers have met this man, he's the uh, Bishop of Austin at the time that this photo was taken, um, and he's now an Archbishop in New Orleans. Um, and he uh, was great to my class and, and has been very supportive of, of, of them in their own undergraduate research enterprises. Um, and if, if, if meeting a Bishop doesn't have much interest for you, maybe meeting a Congressman does. So this is Congressman Pete Sessions at his DC office, and I was fortunate enough to take some of my researchers up to DC. Uh, talking with one of my undergraduate researchers, and she was, in fact, lucky enough to wear his special cowboy hat. The sixth reason, uh, most important reason why I think you should engage in undergraduate research is because you get to travel to interesting places. And if you're one of my undergraduate researchers, you might get to go to Washington, D.C., a trip that I'll be taking with 12 of my students in about a month, or a couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to take 20 students to Rome. Um, and so undergraduate research will certainly open up the world to you. Uh, both literally and, and figuratively. Uh, the fifth reason why I think that you should engage in undergraduate research is because you get to work with interesting people. And so I just put up a, a, a mixture of some of the people here at UT that, that I really look up to um, and how they engage undergraduate researchers. Um, and I'm sure most of you recognize most of the people um, on that screen. I think these are some of the finest people that, that grace the 40 acres here at UT. The fourth reason why you should engage in undergraduate research is ultimately it'll lead to a job. Um, I had an undergraduate researcher who graduated about three years ago, and he sent me this email. Um, right? So he says, hey, Sean, I just wanted to let you know that researching for you has helped me tremendously on this job. No one else in the office knows how to use Thomas.gov except me, so I spent the better part of the past weeks researching both some language bills to prep Steve, who's a person who's running for Congress, for his interviews in town halls. Anyway, just wanted to let you know that researching for you has helped a lot. Thanks for the opportunity in regards, Jonathan. So he was working on a campaign, helping someone run for Congress. Ultimately, I would like to think, because of the help that Jonathan provided for him, he won. And so he got to go to Washington, D.C., and is now on staff for this member of Congress. And he also got some publicity when his photo was in Roll Call, which is the newspaper of Capitol Hill. So once again, you have to go all the way back to the, to the back of the photo, and you'll see a guy there wearing a red tie and a light blue shirt. So that, indeed, is uh, one of my undergraduate researchers. And now he yeah, got a promotion, right? So now he's working, actually, for a member of Congress in Washington, D.C. The third reason why I think that you should engage um, in undergraduate research is because inevitably you're going to learn really interesting things. So some of my undergraduate researchers have studied the business cycle and whether or not it affects how the Supreme Court is, 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 um, is deciding the cases. Another one of my undergraduate researchers uh, is Lance Gooden. He was a researcher of mine about six years ago, and I had him researching congressional elections. So he's trying to figure out why it is that some member of Congress win the races and other members of Congress lose the races. Um, and so inevitably, you're going to learn interesting things when you engage in undergraduate research. The number two reason why you should engage in undergraduate research is because you can solve problems. There was a particular problem here in the state of Texas in that this woman was elected to political office. Um, her name is Betty Brown. Um, and I don't know if any of you know Betty Brown, but Betty Brown became famous uh, nationally 
when at a hearing in the Texas legislature, she, she offered her opinion that she thought the Asians should change their name to something that's more easily pronounceable in English. So this was clearly a black mark on the Texas legislature in a problem. And fortunately, one of my undergraduate researchers knew something about how to conduct a congressional or a legislative race, and so Lance Gooden decided to run against Betty Brown. And lo and behold, on primary night, Lance Gooden defeated Betty Brown and is now a state representative. So some of the lessons that he learned by doing undergraduate research for me has transformed the way that he ran his campaign, and he ultimately wins an election that gets rid of someone who thought that people should change their name to something more pronounceable in English. And finally, the number one reason why you should engage in undergraduate research is because you're going to make discoveries. Um, I suspect that in my lifetime, and certainly in your lifetime, we're going to have discovered new uh, cures for cancer. Um, with the healthcare system, we're going to have figured out how to both expand coverage and to reduce costs. We might even, as one presidential candidate wants to establish a colony on the, on the moon. Um, certainly we're going to have to, if the drought continues, figure out a way to, uh, to sustainably provide water to a lot of people who live in, in, in drought-ridden regions. Um, and finally, it would sure be nice if people could figure out a way to make Congress popular again. And none of that can happen unless undergraduates are engaged in a serious pursuit of research and start learning the answers when they're in classes as undergraduates. And then they'll go on to figure out all of these answers. Um, so that's what I want to share with you today. Um, I certainly applaud all of your efforts, and I look forward to um, learning about uh, the awards that are about to begin. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Bobby Jenkins. Bobby is the editor in chief of the Undergraduate Research Journal and will present the journal's accomplishments and finalists. Hello, everyone. I really hate public speaking. I'm more of an introverted type of person, so if I make a joke and it's horrible, just laugh at it anyway. Um, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess I kind of want to echo some of the things that Dr. Darrell just talked about. You do get to really go to some really cool parties as an undergraduate researcher. Um, in my experience as an undergraduate researcher, I presented at both the Midwest Political Science Association and the American Political Science Association, which, interesting people, but really good like state Texas meeting like happy hours, which are always good. And you get to see your professors in their natural habitat, um, <laughs> which means slightly intoxicated. Um, <laughs> but that's really fun. And then I think another thing I want to echo is that we saw Rick Perry up on the screen, right? And I think he's a good product of what undergraduate research has been in the past and something we can avoid in the future. Um, kind of in the past, right? So we've, we've kind of ignored undergraduate research or it hasn't necessarily been at the top or the front lines. So, I mean, it's no mistake that, I mean, it's very easy for some politicians to believe and our governor to believe that research isn't that important at all. I mean, they didn't learn those values, and I mean, while some of our politicians have um, gotten higher levels of education, master's, PhD, where they've actually learned the value of research, um, our governor only has a bachelor's, and several other um, um, lawmakers only have that certain level, so they haven't really had the value of research, right? But I think if we start immersing that in our culture younger, we're going to have people graduating that know the value of research from a very early age. I mean, let's look at the economy right now, right? So right now, I mean, everybody's competing for jobs, more people are getting college degrees. How are you going to set yourself apart? Um, if you just regard to technology you learned in college, I mean, that's great. You're bringing a skill set to them. But research teaches you to innovate. It teaches you to go that step further. You're giving 110% every step of the way on the job. When it comes time for, if I'm a manager to do um, cost optimization, um, then I'm going to pick someone that's innovating all the time, someone that's earning, earning me money or creating opportunities for my company to earn money, not just someone that knows how to do the job. 
And that's what research teaches you, how to innovate, how to go forward, and like really make every environment you're in, whether it's a business afterwards, whether it's a grad school, uh, some opportunity for both you to gain and for people around you. Um, the Undergraduate Research Journal this year, we're a multidisciplinary um, journal, and we can highlight research from all across campus. Uh, research I don't even understand, <laughs> which is why I have a great staff of 30. Um, and we doubled our staff this year. We had some freshmen and sophomores on staff, which we developed into five student leaders, and it's kind of a pat on my back. But um, if you meet them tonight, they have become they become great student leaders and really amazing editors. Um, Evan is one of those, and I think will be a testament to that for time to come. Um, but our, all of our undergraduates, got, I mean, they're experts in their relative fields, and they're really involved in research in their college. After that, our articles go to a faculty review board, where they're reviewed by our faculty, you know, make sure that they pick up stuff that we necessarily didn't. Like, we got a physics article this year that I had absolutely no idea what it meant. It might have been in a foreign language. Um, but we were able to send it off, of course, to get good reviews. But I think, um, just as a testament to the commitment that the staff have had this year, we've increased our distribution by more than 150%. We've increased our submissions by 50%. Uh, of course, these are like rounded up pictures. <laughs> they get a little more accurate. But, so we've increased all this, but I wonder how, right? So I think it's a testament to how much undergraduate research is being done on this campus, um, to the work of the Undergraduate Research Committee, to the work of RSAC, to the work of the individual law surge and all the other organizations on campus. We feed off the output that you try to um, contribute to or create within your college. So the fact that our submissions went up, I think has a lot to do with all of you and the work you're done. So congratulations to everyone else in this room that's done great work in promoting undergraduate research. Um, and we've also moved from online submission this year, so that's kind of picked up things as well. And we've become more of an online publication. Because let's face it, how do you find articles today? I doubt many of you have gone to the library and picked up an actual paper research journal. Lord knows the only ones I actually look at are the ones that come through the mail because of my membership to APSA. But they just like build this nice little comfortable stack on my shelves in my, um, my little office I set up at home. So um, otherwise, most of us get articles off the line. So I think that's the future of the journal when we move moving forward in the future. And so keep up the good work, and we look forward to keep seeing those submissions in the time to come. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and announce our finalists. These are people that were moved past our initial selection round and are now being considered for final publication. Um, of course, that's still pending, and we'll be releasing the uh, annual publication um, at sometime before the end of April. And I invite you to contact me. It should be that hard to find on the Senate website if you have any questions or more requests to journal. Okay, so if ever I call your name, if you want to stand up, if you're here, and come up, and that will give you a certificate. Um, Travis Alexander, he wrote Over Vulgar Des Display of Rebellion, Analyzing Confederate Memorialization Through Dim Bag, uh, no, Dime Bag, Daryl's Guitar in the 1990s. <laughs> if I put your last name, I'm sorry. Zachary Wilhoy uh, wrote Ground Source Heat Pumps and Micro Combined Heating Power Methods for Improving Residential Heating Efficiency. We'll keep it. <laughs> Kevin Martin wrote a few bad men an analysis of leadership and the escalation of ethnic violence. Akash Sur wrote DNA aptamers targeting NFKB and environmentally induced oxidative stress. Jandy Gu wrote Color Me Weird, Creative Re uh, Resistance, and Street Art. <laughs> Christopher Gluth wrote Necessary Elements for a Successful Electric Vehicle Infrastructure in the Austin Area. <laughs> and Travis Alexander again. <laughs> Um, but we actually removed it. We, he substituted his last article for that, but know that he's doubly awesome in some of the two articles, and they both moved forward our next round. And that article was Gonzo Lord, Counterculture Critiques, Literary Ambitions, and Outlaw Politics of Hunter S. Thompson. So, <laughs> <laughs> Madeline McDaniel wrote Libya and Bahrain, The Re Responsibility to Protect, The Comparative Case Study Approach to Humanitarian Interventions. Julieta um, 
Mueller wrote in the wake of October Revolution, or post October 5th, 2000. <laughs> Nadia Velasquez wrote compartmentalization and poor marital outcomes are negative effect um, conflict resolution tactics to blame. Raul um, Diaz Wall wrote, does the ideological hom homogeneity of the website's user community affect the civility of online discussions? <laughs> and then the last um, paper we're here to nice is Victor Rodriguez wrote, chaotic pendulum. That would be the hard physics paper that I just told you about. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Um, we wanted President Jason G was unable to attend tonight, but I want to speak on his behalf. Um, they don't have any award winners uh, at this time of the season, but they did want to give a special shout out to all of those who have supported Launch this past year. Um, so, on behalf of Jason G, um, I will briefly recognize those that have added, uh, I'm sorry, aided launched in the past year, uh, Professors Plank Tuttle and Dennis Passavoy, Dr. Drug Buster, um, Dr. Daniel Hammergesh, Dr. Thomas Wiseman, and Dr. Joe Strabar. And uh, Launch would also like to give a special thanks to Dr. Shelton Eckland Olson for his loyal support of Launch over these last few years. So, we can give a round of applause for Launch. <laughs> Welcome Colin Johnson, the president of the Science Undergraduate Research Group. Colin has been a terrific student leader helping to cultivate an interconnected research community within natural sciences and beyond. Thank you, Ryan. Good evening, everyone. My name is Colin Johnson, and I'm the president of SERBS, the Science Undergraduate Research Group. Unfortunately, the awards that our organization hands out um, or deals with are a little bit later in the month, uh, after, during the undergraduate research forum, uh, and later in the month as well. Um, so today I'd like to talk a little bit about Surgeon General. Uh, in, sort, in short, we're a community of students dedicated to fostering, encouraging, and supporting the undergraduate research endeavors here at UT. The mission of Surge is to introduce students to academic inquiry by engaging them in, research, in the research process and facilitating the discovery of new knowledge through mentorship and collaboration with both faculty and peers. The aims of our group on a daily basis are to provide peer support for undergraduates seeking a faculty mentor and to continue that support through their research projects, as well as to educate undergraduates about available research-related academic resources and opportunities. To this extent, we organize and promote research-related events such as SURF, our annual science undergraduate research fair, as well as our, uh, fall, as our fall event called Roads to Research. We also provide workshops and lab tours, and even offer or, and even offer funding to students through our Jumpstart Fellowship, in addition to playing host to some of UT's most distinguished research fac researching faculty. In addition, we seek to provide a variety of opportunities for students to improve their current leadership skills, as well as to gain new perspectives and understandings that will enable future growth and development. Uh, I want to take a moment to talk a little uh, kind of personal experience. Um, back when I was a freshman at UT, um, I must confess I actually didn't know what research was, um, and I didn't know what it meant to be a researcher. Uh, when I first got here, I wasn't even aware that UT was the number one research institute in the country. But after joining Surge, I found something that lit a, that lit a passionate fire uh, inside me, and the group became kind of like a new home to me. Uh, then, a few days into my second semester, one of my seniors and I were discussing his personal research when he asked me this. He said, Colin, what could be more satisfying than drawing together your classroom learning and your particular interests to design and execute a research project of your own that could impact our society and impact the people that we love? So I stand here now as an active member of the research community with my own research pursuits and goals. And as I reflect on his words, I realize that Surge has made all the difference in my life. Finally, since I don't have any actual physical awards to announce, I'd like to say a quick thank you instead. Search has been made possible by a dedicated team of officers and our hardworking faculty advisor, Dr. Delia Brownson. And I would like to take this opportunity tonight to recognize them and their superb efforts this year. 
We were also very grateful to Dr. Simmons and the Office of uh, Honors Research and International Study, who has supported Surge in all its endeavors for many years now. Finally, to all of our members and to all of you, each of us may, be, uh, may conduct research in different fields, but we are all united by commitment to spread undergraduate involvement in, the, in uh, academia and the honor class. So thank you for having me. selects one outstanding student researcher from a particular college or school at the university to be spotlighted as the undergraduate researcher of the month. Recipients display a commitment and passion toward research and clearly demonstrate the positive impact of their experience. Each undergraduate researcher of the month is highlighted on UT Austin's No website by University Communications and participates in a Q&A about their individual research experience. Please help us in welcoming the Undergraduate Researchers of the Month. Let's have Sarah Kettles. Come on. Joseph on stage, please. I 
Hi guys, thanks for having me today. Um, it's an honor to be, you know, get chosen for the College of Natural Sciences Fall Award. My name is Joseph Nguyen, and I'd just like to share with you guys a little bit about my uh, research experience and you know, really how participating in alcohol addiction research has really enhanced my education. Um, in the Gonzales lab, I assist Dr. Shannon Zandig, who's actually in the audience right now, um, in investigating the neurochemical mechanisms that underlie the effects of alcohol. And we believe that endorphins, which are natural peptides in our brain, um, have a key role in causing or in addictive behaviors. And if we can you know, uh, better understand how it works in um, causing addictive behaviors, maybe we can uh, understand how really um, it drives alcohol addiction. So um, you know, and our goal is to really contribute to the understanding of alcohol addiction and um, you know, push forward the development of new treatment options for alcohol addiction. Um, you know, just three weeks ago we had an experiment that actually lasted 16 hours and it was a time first experiment that was really, you know, time is a really big factor and, you know, we spent like every minute monitoring the rats and, um, you know, the, just a brief overview of the experiment, we had, um, we had rats in the um, experiment and we had implanted a probe into the brain in a very specific part of the brain um, uh, called the nicotine cumbens because we believe that's where the word pathway is. And, um, and once it's implanted, we immediately did microdialysis samples every 30 minutes, uh, extracting brain samples from them. And this lasted 16 hours. It started at 11 a.m. on Monday and it lasted to Tuesday on 4 a.m. So, you know, the level of dedication and, you know, passion and the results have just, you know, amazed me. And all the postdocs and graduate students, you know, they work really hard. And, you know, I'm just humbled to be, you know, uh, you know in the presence. So. Now, uh, even on the undergraduates in the lab, they're, they're all really knowledgeable and you know, I'm really grateful that they take the time to really teach me and to train me on so many things that I really don't know. They know so much more than me and you know, I'm just grateful. Um, you know, but all my work in the research hasn't really always been about, about the experience. It's really been about you know, finding my passion and really, you know, for the first time in education, taking ownership of it. You know, I began taking classes that really didn't have to do with my major at all and you know, they became the most rewarding classes I've taken. And um, in the summer, I'm actually going to Australia to do some, a different research project that, um, under Dr. Mary Petit. And I'm really excited about that because, you know, um, in Lizard Island, Australia is where one of the best research stations uh, is located. Um, and then when I come back next fall, I'll begin my PharmD program here at the University of Texas at Austin, and, um, where I'll continue my audition research and maybe start my own research project in the future. So thanks for having me, and uh, that's all I have. So. Please have Alejandro come up. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, really an honor to be recognized um, for the work that I'm doing here at UT. Um, I was also sort of a late bloomer into the uh, world of undergraduate research. Um, my project that I just completed um, started a, about a year ago um, in a class that I was doing in the College of Communication with Dr. Talia Stroud, who's now my uh, research advisor. And um, we were looking at um, uh, polarization and instability in online comments and how they related to people's self-reported partisanship online. Um, it was a really interesting project that I just started as a final paper for the class, and when I came back, uh, a year later, I talked to her and said, I'd really like to continue researching in this project. Um, she was incredibly supportive, uh, immediately signed off, and uh, you know, we created our syllabus and started working. So uh, I really appreciate the resources that the College of Communication and the University of Texas has provided to do undergraduate research here. Um, I really encourage uh, students, especially starting, um, I didn't even know about all the programs that are available for freshmen and sophomores to start researching. So. I'm really glad to be at a talk to a research institution where all these resources are available. So thank you so much. Congratulations again to the undergraduate researchers of the month. 
Uh, each semester, the Senate of College Council's Undergraduate Research Committee administers a $1,000 undergraduate research grant. The grant seeks to encourage students to become actively involved in undergraduate research early in their careers by providing funding to a deserving applicant. One winner receives the $1,000 prize to be used towards the funding of his or her research. The winner of the Fall 2011 grant is a bright, ambitious student in the Liberal Arts Honors Program, triple majoring in government history and the self-created African Conflict and Development Studies. So please help us in welcoming Mr. Ben Weiss um, to talk, talk a little bit more about his research experience and accomplishments. Thank you all for being here. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone who made this event possible. Um, it's very reassuring to see such an emphasis on undergraduate research. Um, given my own experience in the past couple of years at UT, uh, it means a tremendous amount to me. Um, and I also want to thank Senate in particular for all their help and for helping me fund my research because a major part of my research took place in Lusaka, Zambia, and the plane ticket alone was over $2,000, and as a college student, it's pretty expensive to foot the bill on my own. Um, so my research was on foreign investment in Zambia. Um, what I was looking for was to see whether the their competition in investment to provide foreign aid and development uh, generated a political position for the Zambian government that allowed it to have more say in the way that investment was applied and the terms that were added on to that investment. What I ultimately found through the initial research stage of my work was that, no, this did not happen. Zambia was still very much the subject to the terms that foreign donors such as the IMF, the World Bank, and China stipulated. This was very pessimistic. You spend a semester studying this thing and you find, you know, the government's still kind of constrained and can't really do anything. What Senate specifically helped me do was to foot the bill for the plane ticket and fly to Zambia and do actual field research in the country. Uh, it was the most amazing experience of my life. I was able to speak with top Chinese investors, um, British firms, the Zambian government. I met with members of the president's executive cabinet in Zambia. Um, and honestly, we've spoken here many times about the benefits of research in general, but I want to speak about the benefits of actual field research and why funding needs to be available for this. My conclusions upon coming back from Zambia were radically different from those that I found in the library. I discovered a wealth of foreign investors that weren't just China or the IMF or the World Bank. And because it's a developing field, you're not going to find this in a book in the PCL. Uh, you're not going to find the detailed analysis that you need to produce a comprehensive piece of research. And so I am very thankful that I was able to go out and actually um, emphasize kind of the practical aspects of what it was I was researching and actually interact with my field of research. Um, so if anyone is interested in hearing a little more about the comprehensive analysis of my research, I'm presenting the paper that I produced at the annual Africa conference this Sunday at 9.30 in Garrison uh, 0.128. Um, and if anyone wants to come, I would, more than, I would be more than welcome to have you there. Um, in particular, I want to thank Ryan Hirsch, who has helped me coordinate um, pretty much all the publicity that I have gotten thus far for my project. I would like to thank Dr. Catherine Boone, who helped me undertake this project, as well as Dr. Toyin Falola. Um, and the biggest thing that was the most meaningful about this project for me was that it really taught me what the next stage in my life is going to be. I went into this project thinking I was a political scientist, and I came out of it wanting to pursue a PhD in comparative political history. Um, so research in general has very, very much so guided the next steps of my life, in my life, and I'm very thankful that UT and Senate has been able to support that. Now I'd like to take a 
take the time to recognize the general research community for all of their accomplishment this year, from the continued growth of the freshman research initiative to new development and program initiatives, from the formation of the Research Student Advisory Council to the Office of Undergraduate Research, and from the cutting edge research performed on this campus to numerous research grants won. This year demonstrates the breadth and quality of UT's undergraduate researchers and the outstanding faculty who mentor them. We are especially pleased to have so many research winners here tonight and numerous research programs represented. We would like to highlight another group in particular, the Democratic Education at Texas, or DEMTEX program. This year, DEMTEX has earned the distinction of being rewarded undergraduate research credit that counts towards students' majors, has partnered with the Center for Teaching and Learning to create courses using the same system as the Course Transformation Program, and increased interest in the program with six courses in the works for the upcoming fall semester. So I'd like to welcome Jordan Humphreys, the director of DEMTEX. Um, just for, there are so many of you, and I see you at a bunch of tables right now, who know what the Dentex program is, but for those of you who don't, it is a program that, with the help of the School of Undergraduate Studies, allows students to create their own discussion-based courses for credit. So right now, I am midway through my second course with the Dentex program. It is Innovative Video Game Design. And in it, we use um, a bunch of communication concepts, marketing, um, and some game design theory to try to create games that um, solve societal needs and, um, and help um, the community in general. So uh, we have a lot of things going, as Ryan said, and it's definitely because of um, all of the, the help from the Friends of the Dentex program around uh, the university. So from Senate, to uh, UGS, to um, some of the people who have applied for, uh, to teach courses in the next semester. Um, it's just great to see that, that UT has this, um, has the ability to foster such an innovative uh, program and um, sort of give it some life and really give it some support and um, help it move forward and, um, and keep growing in university. So thanks to all of you for all of your support, to all the friends at Dentex. Um, thank you very much. And with that, I would now like to conclude the 2012 research reception. Thank you all very much for attending tonight's event. We hope that you enjoyed the program this e evening. Congratulations to all of the outstanding student researchers. It is your research experiences that we honor and celebrate as we all demonstrate the valuable impact research has had and will continue to have on our undergraduate education. By joining students together as an undergraduate research community and uniting them with faculty members, staff, and administrators, we aim to foster a more visible and vibrant culture of undergraduate research at the University of Texas at Austin. The Senate of College Council's Undergraduate Research Committee is charged with the task of promoting research opportunities and enhancing the undergraduate research experience. As part of this mission, we want to recognize these students who have excelled in their participation in research by planning and hosting this reception each year. It is our belief that by bringing all of you together and recognizing your awards and accomplishments, we can truly make research a seamless part of the academic culture at UT. Students yield significant benefits from conducting research, like improved academic performance, higher retention and graduation rates, and a greater development of critical thinking and problem-solving skills. By engaging in a research project, you apply what you learn inside the classroom to issues that interest you. You also have the opportunity to influence a particular field or other people in the course of your research while gaining a hands-on experience through discovery and inquiry. As a leading research university, we want to emphasize that what starts at the University of Texas really does change the world, and undergraduates play an important role. The research reception could not be possible without the tremendous support and generosity from the Office of the Vice President, President for Research, Dr. Sean Theriel, the Senate Executive Board and Leadership Team, Senate's Multimedia and Publicity Committee, the Office of Undergraduate Research, Ms. Becky Carrion, Ms. Veronica Cantu, Ms. Mindy Sutton, all of the research organizations and programs, and all of the reception guests tonight. We thank you all for your ongoing assistance and support. On behalf of Senate's Undergraduate Research Committee, I thank you all again for coming to the third annual research reception, and another congratulations to the exceptional research community for your many achievements and successes.
Thank you guys again.